How we get started? This is where we left off. We'll do the groin region. We're going to focus on the uh, arteries and veins of the lower extremity. And we'll start with the most proximal part, the groin area, and specifically the femoral triangle. Uh, what you see from uh, <coughs> this picture. The femoral triangle refers to an area where you have the femoral nerve artery and vein. From lateral to medial. N A V. From lateral to medial. Nerve artery and vein. Using this picture to teach from uh, nerve, artery, and vein, from lateral to medial. And those are the main contents of the femoral triangle. I'll just list them at, uh, on one line, nerve, artery, and vein. But those are three different things, right? The femoral nerve, femoral artery, femoral vein. Three structures contained within the triangle there. Now the borders of the triangle include this top portion. That's actually the inguinal ligament. So know the contents, but also know the borders. So that top border, called the base of the triangle, is formed by the This lateral border is formed by the muscle sartorius. Then the medial border is formed by the muscle, the adductor longus. So once again, the contents from lateral to medial, nerve, artery, and vein. The base of the triangle, not shown here, but on other slides, it will be shown. The inguinal ligament, the uh, lateral border, and then there, that's sartorius. And then this muscle right here is the adductor longus. And you can see that those structures are kind of like squeezed in between them. Now on this picture here, it's more superficial, they don't show the muscles. They dissect down to the fascia lata. When you do that, one of the superficial veins you see that you're responsible for is the gray saphenous vein. Now here's a picture of it right up here. You can see how it drains into the femoral vein through this saphenous opening. Um, however, it begins all the way down here by the foot on the medial aspect. And it runs all the way up, the medial aspect of the lower limb and drains into the femoral vein right there in the groin region. So it's one thing we should know. this vein uh, also
say it runs medially up the lower limb. I mean, that's what the picture shows, and it drains into the femoral vein. Don't confuse it with the femoral vein. It drains into it. So if you have a model and you're trying to identify it, look for that. Okay. If you don't see one draining into the other, you might just call it the femoral vein if you have no other clues. So when we put these two pictures side by side, the deeper dissection has the muscles. There's the adductor longus, there's the sartorius. The widow ligament runs along the base here. Femoral nerve, artery, and vein from lateral to medial. So this cut vessel is the cut gray saphenous vein, which is shown here. It's on top of the fasciolata. The femoral vein is deep to it. So, um, yeah, keep those two sorted out. Uh, there, there's a model we have. Uh, this is the Nystrom torso in the back. It, it does show this region here. Femoral nerve artery and vein right there. Let's focus on the arteries and let's follow the femoral vein femoral artery down the front of the thigh region. Use this picture to do it. Now I did uh, go over this before. The last time we talked about blood vessels here, we started with the abdominal aorta. Then we branched to the common iliacs. This one follows the right side down. It's the external iliac that will continue on as the femoral. the different things here. This right here is the inguinal ligament going over the artery. So know that. Now what we had taught before is before prior to crossing under it, it's the external iliac. It crosses under that ligament. And then as it emerges out of the body cavity, it passes by the femoral head. And at that point, you call it femoral artery. The artery doesn't change, just the name. So this right here is the uh, external iliac artery. Then the name changes to femoral right there. Moral artery gives off many branches. The, the one that you got to know starts right here. It's the uh, right. circle right there. Let me, let me put a number one there. The first branch coming off the femoral that you have to know is the deep femoral. It's a deep artery also called profunda femoris because to be profound is to be deep. So profound means the same thing. That's what it's labeled on, on this picture. put in parentheses. It, it's not a different one. It's the same one, different name. Now, that has a couple of branches, the medial and lateral circumflex femoral arteries. Medial circumflex artery, lateral do is they, they form an anastomosis around the femoral neck. An 
osmosis is just goes artery to artery. Okay. Right, so let, let me point on the figures so you know what I'm talking about there. Let, let me um start with the the lateral one. going around this way. And then the medial one is coming this way. It's going behind the femoral neck and it's connecting. Okay. So both of those well, they're labeled right there. I mean, I'm just going to try to point to it. These ones are shown well on this picture. We do have models that show it. I kind of don't like them. So when I test on these, I tend to use this picture. You want to make a note of that. If you follow the deep femoral, it gives off more branches, but you're not responsible for them. So I'm going to stop there with the deep femoral artery. If you continue the um, femoral artery, it continues down. And as you can see, it's going to pass from the front to the back. And it begins that journey from the front anterior aspect of the thigh to the posterior knee by going through this adductor canal. So we're doing that thing where the artery keeps changing its name. So to review, first name change right here. External iliac becomes femoral. When it passes underneath the adrenal ligament, now it's going to change its name again. It's going to pass through there. It's going to go to the back of the knee. It's become to become the popliteal artery because that's the popliteal region behind the knee. So in this picture here, um, let me pull the slide down there. There's the adductor canal. It's in the adductor magnus. When the artery passes through the adductor hiatus, that's how it gets from the front to the back. More artery. Passes through the adductor hiatus. On the passageway. And that's where the name changes from femoral to popliteal. Posterior knee. The posterior knee you call the popliteal fossa. Okay. Now, you can't see it there, but the popliteal artery behind the knee will branch into the anterior posterior tibial arteries. Posterior knee. <coughs> Popliteal artery <coughs> branches into
posterior tibial artery. And anterior tibial artery. So these arteries are named after the tibia, the bone of the leg. And um, well, on this picture that I have up on the slide there, this is the anterior view. Okay, now, I'm talking about the posterior knee, but if you see the kneecap, the patella, that's the front of the knee. There's an artery that branches behind it. That's the popliteal artery. The anterior tibial artery is going to emerge through the interosseous membrane at the top of the tip fib, and it's going to squeeze out in between them. And that's where you can view the anterior tibial artery from the front. So that's what I'm writing here. It emerges through interosseous membrane. That's the membrane between tip fib, right? So you can view this artery from the from the anterior aspect. I'll just say you can view this artery anteriorly. So um, on the picture, that's where you see it. There you can recognize that's the anterior aspect. And you have to remove a muscle on this model to see the anterior tibial artery right there. So let's look at a picture of the back of the knee. It's a little blurry. If you look at this illustration, the popliteal fossa is actually this diamond-shaped depressed uh, little depression. That's what fossa means, depression. Uh, I won't have you identify the nerves common um, fibular tibial, but popliteal artery and vein, I will. This is for blood vessels, this next test. This small saphenous vein, it lies between the two heads of the gastrocnemius and it drains into popliteal vein. So you might have to be able to identify that when you write that down. Small saphenous vein lies between gastroc heads. Wait, wait, it's drains in the popliteal vein. Drains into popliteal. So let's move on. This one's a little color coded, and it's still the back of the knee, and it's uh, showing you where the uh, popliteal artery branches. Right there. The branch that stays on the posterior tibia is posterior tibial artery. And you can see the anterior tibial artery is going to merge in the front. Students commonly misidentify the fibular artery. Uh, that's not on your study list. You're responsible for the one that branches prior to that. The anterior tibial artery is going to go to the front. That pretty much um, ends the, the lower extremity. You can follow the posterior and anterior tibial arteries all the way down to the foot. This is just pointing to the branch point. Um, it tends to bifurcate just inferior to the popliteus muscle. So the popliteus muscle can be a landmark for you to see where the popliteal artery will branch. So I, I'll kind of add that in as a side note. So 
So this branching occurs just in inferior to popliteus muscle. question. Uh, usually what I'll do is, if I want you to indicate right or left, I'll actually put it in the question. I'll say, be sure to put right or left, in addition to negative. Sometimes I'll put that, and students just put it right, or just <laughs> left, and they don't name the vessel. That's still part of it. We're switching gears to upper limb. So I got a picture of one of our models there. We'll start with the shoulder and the axillary region of the upper limb. This is the um, axillary region. It's your armpit. Okay. And um, you have to abduct the arm to get a good view of the axillary region. Now, I won't um, <coughs> spend too long on this, but you can see the borders of the axillary region. Whenever it says fold, the fold is skin over muscle. So you got pec major, pec mi minor in the anterior fold, uh, lats and teres major in the posterior fold. And if you follow that line, that's the inferior border of the teres major. And that's an important landmark for us. In the medial wall, basically you got ribs and serratus anterior. And with the lateral wall, you have the arm. Okay. You have the uh, coracle brachialis, you have the humerus, deep structures of the arm. That's the arm pit. Now, when you study the axillary region, it helps to know that the axillary artery is a continuation of the subclavian. And the axillary artery will continue on as the brachial artery, when it gets to the arm, gets out of the armpit. Okay. Uh, this might be another good thing to trace over, even though I have the color arrows in there. Let, let me um, also include the landmark. Now, uh, this is from the previous class. Uh, the previous thing I just drew. This um, picture gives us our three branches off the aortic arch. So you should know this first one coming off the aortic arch. Starts with a B. Brachial, cephalic, trunk. And it branches in the right common carotid, right subclavian. So this one does follow the right side. So let's follow it back all the way to the brachial cephalic trunk right here. There's that first branch. And let's follow the subclavian. So the subclavian has branches, but I'm not going to teach those now. Taught those already. <coughs> um, so the subclavian artery, it will end when it crosses the lateral border of the first rib. So let me kind of like trace it in here. First rib right there. Costal cartilage. Okay, so you got some cleaning artery. Look at the name 
subclaim the artery. It's not going to go over the subclavian, it's going to go under it, right? But the name changes when it crosses the lateral border of the first rib. That's what I drew in there. And then it becomes axillary. Now you're in the armpit region, basically. And well, there's another landmark that, that can help us navigate the axillary artery. It's the pectoralis minor muscle. Now, there's not a name change there, but what the pectoralis minor does is it creates three parts of the axillary artery. second, and a third part. You can simply refer to them as that. Okay, so notice how the um, pec, made, pec minor, excuse me, is going to insert on ribs three to five. I'll draw that here. It's going to originate all the way up here on the coracoid process. That's my pec minor. It goes over the axillary artery. It's like a bridge over it. It goes over axillary artery. So the first, second, third part are simply is the artery, the first part is the artery medial to the pec minor. So the second part is deep to it. So the third part is lateral to it. Okay, so I point that out because the third part of the axillary artery has three branches that you're supposed to know. All right, so third part happens to have three branches. And they are anterior, posterior, circumflex, humoral. That's two. <coughs> anterior, posterior, circumflex, humoral artery. Posterior, circumflex, humoral <coughs> artery. Subscap. Subscapular. It's the third branch of the third part. The subscapular is the largest branch. It's called subscap because if you have the cadaver line face down, if you look underneath the scapula, you should find that artery. All right, so let me show them where you show them on this figure here. All right, so let's continue on here. So the artery passes. Stop it right there. I'm passing over the lateral border of the first rib. I change from subclavian to what? To axillary. We have first part here. Okay, so we're going to go under the subclavian there. So here's our first part of the axillary artery. I'll just draw that. Okay, that's my first part. Now I'm going to go under the muscle. That's my second part. And after that, here's my third part. And that's where we get our branches. This branch, let's do the posterior one first. It's called the posterior circumflex because it's going behind the surgical neck. Then it's going to come out in the front. You can kind of see it there. Form an anastomosis. With the 
anterior branch. So, posterior anterior, <clears throat> okay, this one I'll just kind of label AB. I labeled A first, uh, but I listed it second. Oh well. If you see it going behind the surgical neck, it's the posterior one. Okay. The one passing in front is the anterior one. But they form an anastomosis around the surgical neck. You write that down. These two form an anastomosis. around surgical neck. So let's remember that the humerus, it has two necks. There's the um, anatomical neck, and then there's the surgical neck. <clears throat> you have the head of the humerus, in the glenoid cavity. And in anatomy, right after you name the head, when the head ends, you name the neck, which is right around here. Just like you have the head, the neck. So it always goes head and then the neck. However, in the um, arm, the humerus, there's another neck. The part where it narrows is kind of where it's prone to fracture. Hence, <clears throat> it's called the surgical neck for that reason. And um, these two arteries, you're concerned about a fracture there because if you fracture the cervical neck, you're, you risk rupturing one of those two branches. Okay, the subscapular, right here. Finish drawing. That's the third branch there. I guess I should label it also uh, C. Okay, subscapular is the third branch you got to know, then you continue on narrow. And the axillary ends, I got this dotted blue line, which approximates inferior border of teres major. And that's where you have another name change. Inferior border. of Terry's major. Then the artery becomes brachial artery, and you're in the arm. The artery is named after the region it's in. The brachium is the arm. In anatomy, the arm is the region between shoulder and elbow. That's the brachium. So this is the artery of the arm. All right, so if you look at some atlas pictures, here are the limits of the axillary artery. And I couldn't point to the first rib because it's not shown. Pull this down. But the axillary artery, if I asked you its limits, where does it begin? Well, it begins where the other one ends, at the lateral border of the first rib. And where does it end? The inferior border of the teres major. Okay, so I just kind of point to those approximate locations on this slide. You can see where it ends. I mean, that is the teres major muscle. And it's inserting right there. So the artery is pretty much going from there to there. Here's the slide showing you that the pec minor creates three parts. And then the third part has these three branches. Now, I, I don't like how they draw it. They don't draw them like connected, but they should be. Okay. Maybe in the cadaver he was drawing, they weren't connected. But there's posterior, there's anterior circumflex humoral. So the third branch is the subscapular artery. All right, so let's kind of like go back to superficial veins. Um, so that's the artery. If you 
Notice here, this is very deep. We've removed everything except down to the skeleton. So when you adduct the arm and put all the muscles back, you, you, you can't really see the artery anymore. It kind of disappears. But this vein is showing. And uh, that is the cephalic vein. It lies in the groove between delts and pecs. The groove is called the deltopictoral groove, but the name of the blood vessel that lies in it is the cephalic vein. There's no artery that runs with it. Now, the axillary artery runs with the axillary vein. So maybe that's one way you cannot confuse this for the axillary vein. That's a common mistake. This portion of it lies in the deltopectoral groove. So we're basically in the shoulder region. Just don't call this axillary vein, it's a common mistake. But what you can see on the picture on the left, they removed the part of the pec muscle, and there's this fascia here that the cephalic vein will pierce, which then it can drain into the uh, axillary vein. So that's a picture of our model that we have in the room. I mean, here's a picture of a man on a green board. And what I did was I, I, I thought, well, how can students, without the pec minor or the teres major, how, how can you tell? the different parts of the axillary artery. Well, if you can identify the branches of the third part, posterior, and posterior anterior circumflex femoral, and then here, the subscapular, well, at least you know this is the third part of the axillary artery. If this is the first rib, and what you got is first rib, that's a clavian before it, then it becomes axillary, and after that it becomes brachial. So on the green model, uh, you can figure that out. On the vascular arm we have in the classroom, this features the superficial veins. And so what I did was students kind of get confused by this model. You have to think about it in terms of superficial and then deep as you, as you move the superficial veins inside. And notice that the superficial veins, like cephalic vein, which is one of them, has, there are no arteries that run with them. These are the veins you can visualize in your own, in your own arms and they're skin deep. Just remember that the cephalic vein starts in the back of the hand. It runs up the thumb side all the way up. And up here, it's in the deltal pectoral groove. Whereas the basilic runs on the pinky side all the way up. Now, they kind of have a connection here, the median cubital. And that's in the, um, the cubital fossa, or the crook of the elbow. So let's just note those three superficial veins in the upper limb. So other superficial veins include Basilic, median, cubital vein. That's right, vein call. So think of these as a, as a group. Just don't confuse cephalic and basilic. So uh, cephalic vein laterally, thumb side. I frequently look for the thumb on pictures and on models so I can orient myself. The basilic vein, medially. And look for median cubital vein, the front of your elbow, called the ACF for short, which stands for anta cubital fossa, or just cubital fossa, as it's sometimes referred to front of your elbow when they do blood draw on that vein, typically. So there's a side by side. Now the pictures don't match. This picture, there's the thumb. So that's cephalic. But on this one, there's the thumb on the other side. So 
I know that that's the felon. So that's how you want to think of it. Okay, so if you look at the brachial artery, you have to do a deep dissection. And um, just visualize in the arm, it lies in the um, medium bicipital groove. Your artery lies in the insert the word medial before bicipital groove. the biceps. Okay, so that groove has the artery in it. If you do a dissection, you can kind of see where it begins and ends. And it begins right where the axillary left off. It begins at the inferior border of Terry's major. inch past the cubital fossa. Or antecubital fossa or ACF, whatever we want to call it. Those are all acceptable names. And when it ends, it will um, terminate into the radial and ulnar arteries of the forearm. And again, this happens an inch past cubital fossa. Radial artery, ulnar artery. Now the arteries, I think this is easy because the arteries are named after the forearm bones. So there's a picture um, of a model we have in the room that has it. But if you just look at the simple picture, I mean, we're just talking about one branch point. The radial artery is on the thumb side. Okay, so radial rad. Uh, remember, it's called the radius bone because it radiates in pronation, supination. You should be able to identify the artery. And then the other bone is the ulnar bone, and you have the ulnar artery. If we just focus on that cubital fossa, when we dissect away the skin, all we see are the superficial veins labeled here. Cephalic, basilic, median, cubital. Okay. But if you then dissect away the superficial veins, you can start to see the brachial artery. It runs with the median nerve, but you need to know that. And there you can see the branch here. So look for that branch point within the cubital fossa. And then when you follow the radial and ulnar arteries all the way down to, say, the wrist, I don't even show you the fingers, but could you tell the thumb side? It's this side here. That's the um, DNR eminence, I like to tell it. That's going to be the thumb side. So therefore, that's radial artery. And that's ulnar artery. Okay. There's a lot of tendons in here. There's the median nerve and the ulnar nerve, but you don't have to know the nerves or the tendons for that matter. But be able to find the ulnar and radial arteries in that picture or on the models. Okay. All right. That concludes um, blood vessels. Um, I want to take a break, come back and have lab time. Um, no doubt for Wednesday for lecture. I do want to lecture on Wednesday, but I want to start the next unit to get a head start. But I'll try to give you more lap time on Wednesday. And on Friday, I want to give you the entire time uh, just to study for the models because on Monday's your lab practical. All right, so take a break. Let's come back in about 4.15. You can have some time to study the models.